So what we have here is the Miniature Monday kit from Reaper Miniatures. And this is a paint along with Mini Painting Studio. And we're looking at what comes in the kit and what I do to prepare the kit for painting on the Miniature Monday show or during the Miniature Monday shows. So the kit will come like this. You have the four miniatures. And then you have the eight new colors that come with this kit. There's always a base palette of Nightmare Black. Nor Black has been substituted in frequently, so I use that. Linen White. Intense Brown, Stone Gray, and they also use a gold and a silver color that I happen to substitute a scale 75 Dwarven Gold and the Vallejo Game Air Chain Mail Silver. So the first thing when I get the kit, I will take all the paints out. And start shaking them. This is an important step because the next thing I do is I put just a drop on the top so that I can start to let that dry. And if you're wondering, I pre-shook all these. So I don't need to shake each one again. That one looks like I need to shake it a little bit more. You can see around the edge that it's just the medium and not all mixed with the pigment. So that paint there was plugged up a little bit. It's important with these paints, instead of squeezing harder, that you use a paint pokey of some sort. Reaper does sell a nice little uh, paint pokey just for this purpose. Or you can use a paper clip or just a pin or anything else clear that up. So that's our eight paints. Now they can have some time to dry. Next thing I'll do is take out the miniatures. And I always like to wash my Reaper miniatures before I paint them or work on them or anything. So next I'll do that. So generally what I do is I just have a mason jar and some simple green and I throw the minis in there. Kind of swirl them around a bit. And I'll let them sit for a minute or two. And then I rinse them off in the sink with clean water. 
this is also a nice time if you have any parts that are bent, such, such as his spear axe mix here. When I'm rinsing these off, I'll run them under warm water and get them so that they're straightened out. So now I've rinsed them off and you can see the this here is much straighter and I've kind of gently dried them off. Generally the next thing I'll do is take the airbrush and just try and blow off any excess water that may have settled down in the recesses on each miniature. This gets all the water that might be hiding down in recesses on the miniature out so it has some time to dry while we're doing the next step which will be removing mold lines. So the plan is each month you'll get three plastic figures and one metal figure to practice painting. And generally all miniatures come with some sort of mold lines on them that need to be cleaned off. So I use a sharp hobby knife and just kind of scrape along mold lines to get those removed. I find that scraping generally works good as long as you have a nice sharp knife. Bigger ones you can come in and just gently cut them away. Being very careful not to actually dig into the figure. I also find that other than painting this part takes the longest and so I'm going to cut away for a little bit and sit and work on these bold lines.
So I've spent about 15 minutes cleaning up the flashing here and a couple of things I wanted to point out. This is looks to be an older Bones model. You can see it's cast in a or uh, injection molded, I believe, in a white plastic. And then the newer ones have switched to a gray, which is nice. If you don't prime your minis, um, the gray generally works better with most colors. The other thing I'd like to point out is on this model here, there is a pretty big gap between his head and his body. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that real quick so it has a little time to dry before we uh, go ahead and prime these. So I generally use the Vallejo plastic putty for something like this. I'll take a small bit there. And then there's these silicone uh, brushes, I guess they call them. It's just a bit of silicone in different shapes. And I can scoop a little bit of that up. And just get it down in the, the gap there. Kind of forcing it in with this shaping tool. Usually what I like to do is put in just a little bit too much and then wipe away the excess. This stuff, um, unlike blue stuff or green stuff, um, doesn't really ever get super hard. And it's very liquidy to start with. So then we can just scoop out the excess here. It's important to get out all the extra, otherwise it's going to fill in those fur details. But then we have a nice filled in gap there. This stuff dries pretty quick unless you put it on way too thick. Now I'm just working it out of the, the fur here. So we don't hide any of that detail. Got one little spot in there to fill yet. Then there is gap around the arm also. Go ahead and put a little bit in there. There again, I put in a little too much and then I work away the excess so it doesn't hide any of that fur detail. This stuff does shrink a little bit but not too much. And after some paint and whatnot it will be well hidden. Now I go back and work it in a little better and then work it out of the fur details here. So for priming, we'll actually prime this one last so that has some time to dry. You know, there, there is a lot of debate on whether or not you need to prime Bones models and I've painted them both ways. But I like to prime them uh, because I paint with little thinner paints and sometimes I have a little trouble getting the paint to go where I want if I don't prime them first. So I always prime my Bones models. Before I paint them. Yeah. 
and when you're checking for mold lines you always want to look over the whole model. I missed this one here along there so we'll just take our hobby knife and scrape that out of there a little bit. So now we can set him aside and work on priming the others. Alright, so now we're ready for priming. These will be Zenithal primed. So first I'll prime it with black primer. And then after it dries a little bit, I'll come back and shoot down from the top with some white primer. This one here is a clear or transparent, translucent model and it was mentioned that this one should be gloss varnished as the primer so then we'll come back and do that so I have a relatively cheap all-in-one airbrush here and so I'll start with the black primer first I'm going to move him out of the way so we don't get any black primer on him Primer started here. And I like to stick them on something to hold them. So I'm not getting fingerprints in the primer or anything. So we've got a board here. I'll stick them to with a little post putty. And then go ahead and prime. Priming miniatures isn't all that exciting, so I sped this part up. So in the video, I did comment about why I like to use the black primer instead of the uh, either on prime bones or a white primer or gray primer. One of the problems is any little spot that you miss in painting with the white primer, or just white bones shows up um, in the finished mini a lot. Where if you use black primer, that tends to hide those little tiny pin spots in the miniature that you may have missed painting. It just looks like shadow. Usually they're buried quite a ways in. The other thing in the uh, paint-alongs is that he generally uses Zenithal priming, which we'll skip to in a little bit. But that's just a process where you use a dark color on the bottom, and then from the top you spray down uh, white primer. If you use thin paints, it can help. Um, the color will actually look darker or look brighter based on whether you're painting over the white primer or the black primer. One thing too that's important while you're priming is look at the miniature from all different angles. It's really easy to miss some of the underneath and uh, make sure you get all those spots primed so that everything you're starting from a, a canvas that is all the same instead of having some plastic showing and some primer and things like that so here i'm switching to the white getting that mixed in there's a little bit of water in the airbrush and then from the top down i just give it a quick coat of white so that i can easily see where the shadows and stuff are All right, so now we can prime the crystal golem in some gloss varnish. So I have some Vallejo gloss varnish here. And I like to thin this out just a little bit. It tends to be a little thick, so a couple of drops of water, a little bit of varnish. We'll give that a quick stir. give him a quick spray with the gloss varnish.
this tends to be a little trickier to do because, well, it's clear. And so what I'm looking for is that the surface of the miniature looks flat. Turning them all different ways to make sure I got varnish on it. Looking for dull spots that I may have missed. Trying not to get too much on. And that's it for that. And I'll go wash out my airbrush and uh, we'll come back and see what he looks like. And so, while I was waiting for our gloss primed crystal golem to dry, I want to do a little math. So, the kit right now is $39.99, and the figures, if you were to buy them individually, are $16.96. The eight paints would be $29.52 for a total of $46.48. So the kit is a little cheaper than buying everything individually. And of course it does come in their nice uh, pistol case. I've used these for, um, if I go somewhere else and paint, you can throw a couple of brushes in them, throw a bunch of paints that you'll need in them. And they are kind of handy to have around. This is the new style case that uh, replaces the more rounded standard looking pistol cases. So all in all, we have our three plastic figures, or uh, excuse me, two plastic figures and the metal figure. We have our translucent crystal golem. We have our ghost white paint. Our dark elf shadow, which looks to be a very, very dark purple. Let's take a look at that once. Yep, so I don't know if it's showing up, but it's very, very dark purple. Have our Surf Aqua, which is a nice teal blue color. Our deep red. Tarnished Copper, which is a nice reddish brown color. Highland Moss, kind of a bluey, uh, darker green. Our other blue. And of course, Brains Pink. So that's the whole kit. Thank you for watching.